So I, like you probably do, feel pretty powerless these days. It's as if we're tiny players who can't seem to even make a tiny dent against just overwhelming opposition to our goals. And I imagine a lot of people feel this way from time to time. But what does this have to do with Assassin's Creed? Well, it all fits into the story of a group of people who lived in the Middle East back in the Middle Ages. This organization, later immortalized in culture as the Assassins, were the inspiration for the secret assassin organization in Assassin's Creed. How many more times can I say assassin in one paragraph? So let's talk about this small group of Shiite Muslims who faced overwhelming enemies on all sides and how they still managed to take down powerful rulers, build a legendary reputation which echoes to today, and how their example can show something a tad uplifting and constructive for social movements and even in your life? I know it sounds like a stretch, but hang on to find out how it all works. Assassin's Creed, a game which has enjoyed a prominent place on my unplayed Steam list, mostly because it's a bad console port, begins its long epic series documenting a highly fictionalized battle between the Templars and the Assassins. This story, while not the globe-spanning espionage war continuing today, is rooted in one particular conflict during the ages of the Crusader Kings. No, not that Crusader Kings. Actually, yeah, that Crusader Kings, but in real life. So let's go to the medieval Middle East and find out who these assassins really were. The word assassin comes from the Arabic word assassin, which is the plural word for people of principle. There's a long running myth that comes from the word hashashin, which is a word for someone who smokes hashish. It was a myth, I believe, before I started researching this video. See, I'm learning beside you. The assassins were Shia Muslims, which says a ton about their position in society in the 11th century when they formed. Shiites belonged to a branch distinct from the most populous form of Islam, the Sunnis. These sects have a ton of doctrinal differences and a history of division which results in unrest in the Islamic world to this date. To give it a fair shake, I would need to make it its own video, which you can suggest by going to this website, but to glaze over and give the bare facts, they're divided over a dispute over who was the right person to succeed Muhammad. Was the Caliph the religious ruler of the Islamic world? A title passed on through piety, like a pope or something? Or is it a rulership title which would pass down through Muhammad's relatives? Sunnis go the piety route, Shiites go the legal route, and they tend to put a higher value on things like legal rulings and following rules and legal decisions, but moving on. In this period, authority was dominated by Sunnis who to varying degrees wanted to destroy the Shiites. One movement within the Shiites was the Ismailis, and within that movement was the Nizari Ismailis, which is the word the assassins used for themselves. Not much survives about the founding of the assassins, but it seems to trace an origin to the year 1094 to northern Iran. They began as a cult formed around a powerful charismatic leader named Hassani Sabah. Why he began the assassins is unknown, but he was able to leverage his power as a popular celebrity within the Ismaili community to gain fanatic followers. The likely reason is he wanted to become a powerful political leader in a world where so many were hostile to the Shiites. The assassins were surrounded by enemies on all sides. Not only did they face Sunni rulers who wanted their order destroyed, but there was another thing disrupting the politics of the region. Yes, the European Crusaders were coming to spread the peaceful word of Jesus at the tip of their spears. Among them, the Special Order of the Knights Templar, who might be a good video subject of their own and are surrounded by myth and mystery. There are still more than a few conspiracy theories about them, and so just enough vagary to make it into Assassin's Creed. The assassins settled in a mountain fortress in Alamut, which would today be in Iran. There, they began to train some of the deadliest warriors in history. These were fanatics 
who would go on suicidal missions and fight using daggers. Often, they would spend years infiltrating orders to accomplish their goal and were like medieval commandos. I can't say for sure, but I'll bet the Fremen from Dune were inspired by this. And, of course, their legendary prowess at infiltration and murder led to the creation of the popular video game I'm ruthlessly milking for sweet, sweet search traffic. But hey, we're learning something, right? Uh, hopefully the Assassin's Creed fans won't judge me too harshly. Anyways, we have lots of story to go. The Assassins were outgunned, outmanned. They wouldn't be able, even with their badass commandos, take on the armies of the vindictive Sunnis or the smelly Crusaders. They need to be clever, use their force carefully, surgically, and only when it will move their cause forward. They wanted a Nizari Ismaili state. The assassins were the masters of assassination. Through murder and psychological warfare, read terrorism, they were able to hold their own against a superior foe. I say terrorism, but they typically try to terrorize individuals through intimidation and seem to have a distaste for indiscriminate killing. Today, they call this method of fighting asymmetric warfare. It's why groups use terrorism at all. It works. It led the Americans to victory over the British in the American Revolution. Then ironically, it led the Vietnamese to victory over the Americans almost two centuries later. These weren't fly-by-night assassinations either. The assassins killed their marks in broad daylight and made their escape, but likely not by jumping into a wagon full of hay. See, I can make references to the game. I'm hip. I'm with it. At their peak, the assassins took down two powerful caliphs and even the soon to be crusader king. <laughs> of Jerusalem, Conrad of Montferrat. Many try to take down the assassins, but they managed to hold on to their defenses for almost two centuries. They didn't fall until the thing which took down the entire Islamic golden age did. The Mongols. However, their use of scare tactics and infamous murders turned the assassins into the stuff of legends. Stories spread around the Middle East and Europe about fanatic warriors who were masters of infiltration, disguise, and murder at dagger point. It's this legend which inspired Ubisoft and countless other artists ranging all the way back to Dante. I mean, if the series wasn't a dud, this would likely be the Know Your Fantasy video for the Rogue. It's powerful stuff, and it's what makes games like Assassin's Creed so fun. But I think there's a lesson to learn from the Assassins. When you feel overwhelmed by people who seem to be opposed to your existence, your uh, ability to enjoy a life or have anything, look at the Assassins and realize that the rules that were meant to be played by were put in place by those who are winning through those rules. If you want to succeed despite a power imbalance, you're going to have to be unorthodox, surgical, strategic. By the way, before this gets taken the wrong way, I am in no way advocating for terrorism and assassination. Or am I? No, no, I'm not. Or am I? Thanks to 12Tone for the theme, as well as Don and Carrie Johnson, Michael Kirshner, Scott Smith, Luis Ineas Guarita, Mary D'Onofrio, Martin King, James McNeese, and Garrett Kwan. Like, share, subscribe, step back, retention. <laughs>